No sleeping on the job. We got work to do. Okay. So wake up. Hey guys, it's Pamela. Okay, just gonna jump right into it. The, I already took the lid off. This is Valspar, one coat, exterior stain. I'll put a picture up, solid, neutral base. You want it, whatever you use, you want a deep base or a neutral base. That way you can color it and it's nice and thick. It's easier to start out with something thick and knock it down. At least that's what I found. I'm measuring this in grams. And I'm just gonna make a mess here too. I don't have one of those pourers. All right, just do it, just go for it. I shook this up. Have them shake it up at the paint store if you can. Let's just pour a whole 200, make an even 200. See how th thick and luscious that is? <laughs> okay. This squale is squale. This, that's a combination of scale and squirrely. This scale is kind of squirrely, so that's 200 grams, even though it says 206 now. I'm probably gonna start and stop this video so I can get my thoughts together and make it flow seemingly and make it a shorter video for you. Okay. I've been putting GAC because I had it. The key to this is thinning this out so that it has more slip and so that it flows more. And so I'm going to put something in it to make it slip more. Um, you can use a varnish. This is just an inexpensive craft varnish by Delta. I've also tried this one from Plaid. It says polyurethane on it. These are water-based. Varnish has a degree of oil in it, whether it's, well, I guess it's, it's going to be synthetic. And um, these companies, whether it's Minwax or whoever, they don't tell you what's in it. So uh, if you kind of look at some of the, th the things that may go into a varnish or a poly or a lacquer, a urethane, whatnot, you'll see. They all have similar components, uh, but companies make up their own recipe and they're not regulated to tell you what that is unless it's something that is detrimental to your health or cancer causing, then they'll put on the can that don't breathe this in, etc. Uh, if it's not that bad for you, you can use it indoors. It's usually water-based and it'll say low VOCs, which that's what I'm trying to stick with, guys, but, you know. Okay, this is Floetrol. This is just the regular Floetrol. Strained. Latex. Flood. Floetrol. I'm going to put, I'm going to start with 10 grams and then I'm going to put about five grams of GAC because it doesn't take much of this at all. This is a low crazing extender for pouring acrylic colors. And then I'm using the wetting agent again that I used in the colors. Now it'll tell you on the bottle how much to use. Two, three, four, five, six. 
Okay, and I'm gonna put about six teaspoons. I modified the colors also. And to the Mod Podge from video number two, the Super Gloss Brilliant, okay? Not the regular Mod Podge, not the fabric Mod Podge that comes in a lighter blue container. This is the darker blue, Super Gloss Brilliant Extreme. Okay, we went over that in video two. Um, about a tablespoon to a dime size amount of color and Floetrol to consistency, which I think was about a teaspoon total. The paint that I used in that video, I used soft body. I used two different types. This is Deco Art Americana Premium. It's found at Michael's and so is this. If you can find them in stock, good luck. <laughs> this is Arteza Soft Body. Not the, I think their tube is more of a hard body. But this is pretty pigmented, so. As I said in video two, different paints are gonna react differently, different colors, kinda have to just play around. That's what this video is, we're playing around. I added to oil water-based, oil modified polyurethane. Now I've shot this video twice, so I may add some snippets that I did from the first take. This is a half pint. I think it was seven or eight dollars. Um, this is the clear satin. They also have a gloss, but they were out of it. Get the gloss if you can. I think that would be better. Ew. I'll put him aside. I have some of him here in this cup. It's kind of an amber color, but it's uh it's clear. Okay, we'll just start with this guy. When you make your paints, I didn't tell you all this before, but just make up several at one time so you can, it's easier to get the consistency with that Floetrol. It's just gonna make it easier. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do three right now, make it quicker. Uh, that was a quinacridone rose. This is just a, a cobalt teal. And this is a, a green gold. I love this phthalo green and there's such a pretty deep shade of, these are kind of shiny, so I like these paints. Kind of have a gloss to them, which might help the the cause here. <laughs> um, okay. Then an equal amount of the Minwax water-based oil modified poly. Just an equal amount as to paint. water-based and there's pretty much no smell. Mod Podge. Now this stuff is super thick. Resin-like varnish and that's about half a teaspoon. Now have I tried it without the Mod Podge? No. Just gonna be honest. 
Since I told you to make up your paints in video two with the Mod Podge and I know that works, uh, there's no need to tell you to. I tried them with them both. They work together. It may not work at all without the Mod Podge. I'm going to start testing and try to find something to replace this Mod Podge altogether. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I mean, it's just... I wish it came in a larger container. What's next? The Floetrol. Well, I'm sorry. Get your little sticks out. I'm going through a lot of these sticks. I wipe them off or let them dry and just keep on going. <laughs> you might want to get some of those little sticks that are cheaper than these fat tongue depressors. So just go ahead and make sure thick stuff together first. It's kind of, kind of something you learn if you're a cook. Together first. Kind of like putting your dry ingredients and your wet ingredients together separately and then adding them together. Floetrol, let's start with half a teaspoon. I think I have the least amount in this blue, but that's okay because blues tend to be thinner. In the paints that I've used, and here's that wedding agent again from video number two. One, two, one. Two, one, two. This is kind of dangerous with working with trying to pour this heavy container that gets top heavy as it comes out. So, you know, I'm going to put it, put my strained Floetrol, strained Floetrol in a little squeeze bottle. Why I am worn out, guys. I've been playing with this. I, yeah, I've been playing with it. I ran out of Gax. I Amazon that in two day shipment. It's just okay. Here's my topper. You can play with this. It does make a difference. This is the little white puddle that you blow out over the rest of the color. And I have used Lucas Krell Studio. I ordered this from Jerry's just because I had it. It's titanium white. And um, I guess it's comparable, comparable to Liquitex Basics. But I've tried just the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic in the last day or so. We all have this already, or you should. And um, one part that to two parts flow troll. Get you a tile or a canvas if you have unlimited funds. And <laughs> and um, this is a six by six. And just uh, make up a couple of colors, at least two, preferably three. And uh, just play around. Thank you.
Okay, guys, I added half a teaspoon. I tried it with and without. Half a teaspoon of base coat to each color of what we mixed up. The base coat being this white part, which was the house paint mixture. And it seemed to make the colors flow better. Made them stretch easier, so we're going with that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, we're going to um, keep improving this, of course, so I'll be making more videos, improving, uh, trying to switch the Mod Podge to something else is what I'd like to do. Because I want to keep everything, like, you know, easy to get, especially in my area. <laughs> so... I think everything's pretty easy to get anyway, but okay. Now, thanks for watching. Please subscribe so you don't miss a future video with a new recipe. Bye.